let your will be done. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Take the broken things and raise them to 
receiving. So let all the striving cease. This is my victory. Yeah. Hey.
to get to Jesus. They say there is no crowd too big for us not to get to Jesus. There's no crowd too large for us not to get to Jesus. There's no space in our heart that we cannot be met by the very power and presence of Jesus. And church this morning, Jesus is saying, are you willing to punch through some ceilings? Are you willing to kick through some doors? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get to him, get to his presence, get to his word and work in your life? Even punch through doubt, punch through despair, punch through some control, punch through fear, punch through discouragement to say, I am willing to get to Jesus, to get to his healing power in your life. We sensed this morning that Jesus wanted to do a healing work this morning. That there is healing that he wants to do. And if this morning right now you are dealing with any sickness, infirmity, and we heard this chronic illness, that it's something that you've just been living with. In the name of Jesus, he wants to say to you, even though you've been praying for healing for five or 10 or 12 or 15 years, will you punch through one more ceiling to ask of me today? Will you kick through one more door to get to my presence today? Because he is a healing God today, amen? And if this morning that's you, and you're like, I need physical healing in my life. Doctors gave me a report and I need a physical healing. Would you just raise your hand? Because the presence of the Lord is here and he is ready to heal. Raise your hand and say, I receive. This is your way of kicking open that door, of kicking down some ceilings and walls. And you say, Jesus, I receive the healing. I receive the healing that you have for me, church. If you see hands around the room, would you be the four friends to lay hands on them and declare healing in their life? Would you be the one that would go to the friend and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We speak to all sickness and disease right now and we say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Every chronic illness, we say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, cancer has to go in the name of Jesus. Gastrointestinal issues have to be set right in the name of Jesus. Anxiety and depression need to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, church, just begin to say, I receive. Remember, when I open up my mouth, when I open up my mouth, say this, I receive your healing. I receive your healing, Jesus. I receive your healing over my life. Healing internally, healing physically, we receive this morning. Thank you that there's no crowd too big that we can't get to you. Hallelujah. And just start singing church. Just start singing church.
just say thank you to Jesus for his healing. Thank you to him for his work. That it's not a one and done. That there's an eternal work taking place in each and every one of us this morning. And the only qualifier of that work is this, Jesus, I'm making room, have your way. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for the healing that took place this morning, the healings that are represented here, both physical, emotional, and spiritual. We thank you, Lord, that your way is better. And we choose to be a people of God that declare with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, let your kingdom come and your will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Have your way. Have your way. Would you just say that to him, church? Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. And with that, church, would you just extend a hand to our keiki and our children as we bless them? This morning, we believe in the stewardship and the gift that our children are. We believe that God's entrusted them to us to not just protect and provide, but spiritually raise them up in the word and work and life of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, right now, we bless our children. We thank you for the gifts that they are to us, and we pray that even now as we release them to their classrooms, that, Lord, you would expand their minds to understand your ways at a young age, that we would be raising a generation of Samuels that say, here I am, Lord, send me. I'm listening. I'm listening for your servant hears, that you would open their ears, open their eyes, open their heart, open their mind to your ways in the name of Jesus. And all of God's church says amen. 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 Hallelujah. We just seal this time. Would you do this with me? Would you release your keiki? Both classrooms will be heading out to my right, your left, and walk across the room. Say good morning to one another. Walk across that room.
We, I don't know if you guys know, but this month is Pastor Appreciation Month, and I think we've got some pretty amazing pastors in the house that we need to celebrate. So, could I ask for Pastor Albert, Pastor Heather, Pastor Bam, Dr. Jean, Pastor Makana, Tammy, could I have you all please join me up here? Barbara, I think I got everybody. Let's give them a warm welcome while they come up here and we get to celebrate them this morning. We also have Pastor Dave and Kathleen who are out on mission right now. Um, so we, they are here with us in spirit. So we just wanted to just appreciate all of you. We are so blessed to be able to call you our pastors. We are so blessed by your words that the Holy Spirit speaks through you and into our lives and into our children. We thank you for our hearts for this community. We are thank you because we actually have a place to come on Sunday and to worship him freely. And that is all thanks to your prayers. It is all thanks to your labors. It is all thanks to your time and dedication to help us grow in our walk. So thank you all from the bottom of all of our hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, it is not Hawaii without giving you a little bit of a lay of aloha. So we have some youth to come and give you some blessings. Come on up, guys. Helen is with us in spirit as well. Yes. <laughs> so um, do you mind if we just bless them with a prayer? Can we have you guys all stand for this? <laughs> we are flowing with the Holy Spirit this morning. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you for every single one of these pastors, Father God. But Father God, most of all, we thank you for the work you're doing in their hearts individually. We thank you that it's in their quiet time with you that you are doing pruning, that you are doing restoring, that you are doing loving work within their hearts. And Father God, we see the fruit of that labor, dear Lord. So we thank you for their hearts. We plead the blood of Jesus over every single one of them. We ask that you protect them. You keep them safe. We thank you for their marriages, Father God. We thank you for their families, dear Lord. And we just ask that you continue to do your mighty work within them, dear Lord. We just lift them up to you. We ask that you continue to have your way in them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. <laughs> to the screen. Hey, Ohana, are you guys coming? <laughs> hey, Ohana, are you coming? Are you coming? Hey, Hope Chapel Kona, are you coming? Join us November 6th as we celebrate all that God has done, what he's doing, and he will do. We're going to have food, fellowship, hula, music, bounce houses, because it's an Ohana thing. See you there. Hey, Ohana, are you coming? Will we see you there? Good morning. Aloha, privet, annyeonghaseyo. Okay, we're doing announcements today. Um, just uh, quick announcements on Keiki. Please remember to sign your Keiki up. It's not over here anymore. It's actually in the back where you're going to find all of our uh, Hope Group stuff, uh, food, coffee, but your keiki sign up is there. And then remember to please pick them up afterward because we got all those kiddos up there that are like, where's mom and dad? Where's mom and dad? So that's our first announcement. 
Um, the next one is not that one. <laughs> we'll flow, we'll do this one. All right, so you just saw the video. There's a different one. There we go, woo! All right, so you just saw the video. It was for our anniversary um, service that we're gonna be having November 6th. Uh, 38 years, right? Pretty amazing. Um, not all churches last that long. So it's a testament to the uh, ohana that we have. It's a reality. <laughs> Some of you know. Anyway, um, so hopefully all of you will be there. Invite people too. Um, this could be a great opportunity to have that person that you're trying to minister to for them to be able to come and have a party, right? Have a disco, right, Dimitri? Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, I want to just encourage everybody to, you know, invite people in. We're going to celebrate what God has done um, in this church for the past 38 years. Okay. About a month ago, Kanani texted me and she's like, hey, go on the church app and see if Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I don't have the church app yet. <laughs> but I have it now, and it's actually pretty helpful. So go on and um, download that app. I just paid for um, the women's dinner through the app. Super helpful. You can kind of, kind of get to know what's happening in the church and things like that. So about speaking of the women's dinner, just a reminder, on Friday, we're going to get together as women. We're going to eat together, laugh together, share, talk story together. Um, so... Um, we're excited about that. And then also men's golf is today. So we're excited for men to get to go out. Yes. Hit some balls on the green and have fun together. All right. So we're going to have uh, youth happening tonight. So that is pretty exciting. Right. So um, you saw some of the, the beautiful youth walk up. Bless the uh, pastors up here. So if you have youth, as it's sixth, seventh through twelfth grade, come on over. Um, they're going to be at the Moors tonight um, at at five p.m. They're going to have food. We'll do some worship, play some games, and it's just a great time to fellowship and have our youth come together and uh, grow in their relationships and also grow in their relationship with God as well. So if you got youth, send them your way. Again, invitations. Invite your friends. Uh, all you youth out there, have them come over, and it's going to be a fun time. And we have a new Hope group coming out. It's only eight weeks, so two months. If you guys are wanting to strengthen your relationship and your marriage, come out for that. It's Wednesday night, starting October 19th. And then... This is something that is really cool, is a community outreach interest meeting for um, October 23rd. Um, we've done these in the past um, where we had church outside of these walls and went down to old days and we went all over the place just blessing people in the community, lifeguards and everything. So this is another chance to be a part of that if you didn't get to be a part of it before. Um, and it, it, there was some really great testimonies that happened because of that. So if you're interested in that, we're gonna have a meeting October 23rd at 11 a.m. Lunch is provided. That may be incentive enough for some people to sign up. Uh, you can go on this Church Center app and sign up as well, or if you're old school, we have signups in the back as well. All right, and tithes and offerings. So you can give online for tithes and offerings, or you can give in person. I believe it's at the back still over there. Um, Nate and I have always made it a priority in our lives to tithe, and <laughs> even in really rough seasons, but we've really seen God bless that, and especially when things are tight, and we've been like, oh, okay, God, here you go. But um, we've never been without, because he's faithful, and he's a good father. So um, we're going to bless these tithes, and um, yeah, well, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that you're a good father, and that we can trust you no matter what season we're in in life. Um, you are constant and faithful, and you, um, your love is over us. And so we just thank you for who you are. We pray that the little gift that we have for you, Father, that it would bless the community of Kona, and it would go beyond this island and um, just reach other people as well. So thank you for what we have, and we just thank you, and we are glad as we can give a little bit back to you. And in your name, amen.
How are you guys doing this morning? Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. On behalf of the pastors, thank you for appreciating us. Um, I could say this, that, that we also appreciate you, right? So it's all good when we appreciate one another and you appreciate me, I appreciate you. So thank you so much, Albert and Heather. I just got to say, brother, I, uh, you could tell a tree by its fruit. And it, I just rejoice in, in the fact that the labor and the fruits of your labor are so evident here in Hope Chapel Kona. So on behalf of everyone here, from your leaders to your servants and your volunteers, we mahalo you both. Thank you for leading us so well. Amen. Could we give Albert and Heather a round of applause? <laughs> Amen. Y'all ready for a good word? I heard it's, it's, it's men's golf today. So I've, I've limited this sermon to three hours. <laughs> so it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be... Be good. Well, welcome. Aloha kakayaka, everyone. What's up? How's it? Uh, to all our family online, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. May the good Lord just wash you and cover you with his grace today. And so if you've been keeping track with us, we're on a message series titled Committed Relationships. And really all this is, is we're preaching messages about God's design, God's desire, God's heart for relationships. Praise the Lord. Listen, I'll tell you what, you will never hear what we're saying in major news outlets or, or major social media platforms because our intent and our heart is to preach God. Amen? And so, so you know, it's been kind of intense the last couple of weeks <laughs> in regards to these messages, but it is knowing the truth that will set you free. And what I love about Jesus is that he's always in the business of restoring and redeeming. He knows we mess up. And so that's why we trust him to forge his character out with Adam's nature, in with Jesus' nature, to forge his character and substance within us. Because when we're like him, we are then better at relationships. Amen? And so today I want to talk to us about dating. Yay! I want to talk to us about dating, y'all. Now listen, listen, married folk, you are not off the hook. Because just because you marry doesn't mean you can't, you stop dating your spouse. I got an old friend, an elderly friend, he would always say, bam, bam, let me tell you, the secret to marriage <laughs> is you date your wife. And so, so married folk, this message is for the singles, all oh, the single ladies, and also <laughs> for all the married people in here. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, so, so the title of this message is called The Law of Attraction, The Purpose of Dating. The Law of Attraction. The purpose of dating. And I just want to start off, because I know the guys want to go golf, and I want to start off by, by just going right to, right to the main point. The main point is this. Take out your notes. The main point is this. It is important that you discover the person's character before commitment. Hello, somebody. I feel like I just landed at your airport. Here I am. It is important to discover the person's character before commitment. Let me just put it in Bam's language. Amen? Get to know the bugger before you jump in one relationship with him. Get to know the titta before you jump in one relationship with her. Praise the Lord. I got a good friend back in Vegas. I was a civil engineer, so I, I had this friend who's from the Middle East. He had moved from the Middle East, went to school in America to get an engineering degree, and so we were working together in this civil engineering firm. And we're designing water lines and roadways and doing calculus problems. It was great. <laughs> and so, so, so he's a Middle Eastern friend. He, and, and, and in along our working relationship, we got really close as friends. Uh, I would mentor and coach him and counsel him on how to prepare improvement plans and roadway plans and sewer line plans. It was awesome. Uh, 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 but the, what, what, draws, what drew us even closer is because of our difference, was our difference of beliefs. He was Muslim. And I was, you know, trying to be a Christian. And so we, we talk about Jesus. Now, Muslims have a different perspective of Jesus. They believe Jesus is a prophet only, but he's not God. And so, so us Christians, we believe that Jesus is God. And so we'd have these great, great relationships. And so my brother and I, we, we, we got, got super close as friends. And then one day, he showed up to my office, but he had like this really sad look, like this worried and anxious, scared look. And I said, hey, brother, what's going on? How are you doing? He goes, well, I got to go back home. I said, oh, you got to go back home to the Middle East to visit mom and dad because his parents are still there. And he said, no, um, actually, I'm going to go back home to get married. And I said, oh, congratulations. You're getting married. But wait a second. I didn't know you were engaged. And he says, well, that's just it. I never met her. 
And I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, just like that. I said, whoa. All these things started working in my mind. Like I have many thoughts. What if she doesn't like you? What if she thinks you're ugly? <laughs> right? Okay. What if you don't like her? What if you think she's ugly? Right? And so I said, wait, how, how can you marry someone you never met? Well, he said, well, in our culture, it's arranged marriages. And so my family just called me up and said, hey, we found you one wife. Come marry her. <laughs> and I said, well, what if, what if it doesn't work out? What if her personality is not great? What if she's a witch? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yeah. What, what if it doesn't work out? And, and, and he says, well, I have no choice. That's just the way it is. I'm just going to get married and I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her. So I said this. I said, can I pray for you? <laughs> and he goes, yes, please. So I lay hands on him, and I'm like saying, Jesus, you are God. <laughs> Jesus, you are Lord, that though my brother walk through the valleys of the shadows, you are with him in the name of Jesus. Nothing is too hard for you. And he's like, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> so we say amen. The guy goes to the Middle East for three weeks, and he comes back. And so I, I, I asked, bro, how was it? And he had the biggest cheesy smile on his face. And he said, bam, she is gorgeous. <laughs> she is beautiful, and she has a great personality, and she's nurturing, and she's caring. In fact, I got to meet his wife uh, 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 and had dinner with them. And I still keep in contact with my friend. Two weeks ago, we had a conversation. They now have two beautiful children. They're in Nevada, and he's doing civil engineering while she's just blessing him with her beauty. <laughs> now, now, think about that. Now, fortunately for my friend, he's living the happily ever after marriage, got married to a girl he did not know. Fortunately. But how many of us in here have gone into a relationship with the person you thought you knew? <laughs> And three years later, the bugger done changed on you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know all the wives are like, I can't care if this guy. Yeah. Like you thought you purchased chocolate macadamia nut candy. And you got no chocolate, no macadamia, just a nut. You done married a nut. Uh, how many of you have been, don't raise your hand, but I know you want to. I know you want to. Like, I thought I married Prince Charming. I kissed a frog. He's still a frog. Where's my food? Where's my dinner? How many of you have been in that relationship? Don't raise your hand, but I know you want to. <laughs> the truth is, we've all done relationship wrong. The truth is, we've all experienced the pains of relationship and of dating but here, can I encourage you with this? God is a redeeming God. He is a redeeming God. It's not like he says, oh, you messed up in dating and relationships. I can't help you. No, that's why he came. He came because he knew we were flawed and perfect people, even in relationships and dating. And so he says, I am here with you. How about I help you work out Adam's character and work in Jesus' character in your relationship? Amen. And so today, listen, I'm just going to give us some super practical advice because if there was anyone that did dating wrong, it'll be this guy. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, unfortunately, in the Bible, there are no, like, ten commandments of dating. Like, the Lord is not specific. Like, thou shalt not date on Monday. Thou shalt not date a girl from church. Thou shalt not date a Samoan woman. He doesn't, he doesn't put, like, it's not in details. However, it is clear throughout the Bible, God's heart, God's desire, and God's design for relationships, also including dating. So I'm just going to give you some practical advice in, in terms of what the Lord had taught me about dating. And so what I'm trying to say is learn from my mistakes. Amen? So let's start off with the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 states this, on account of three, let's read it aloud. Kasi lua kolu, say it. There is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way of death. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. Many of us are experiencing death in our relationships, in our dating, in our marriages. Why? Because we've been doing it man's way. And the word of God says that man's wisdom, the best of man's wisdom is foolishness to God. And many of us are suffering the pains of relationship with your nut <laughs> because we've been doing it God's, or we've been doing it man's way. And so I'm just going to share with you some of the things that I had learned through the hard way 
of, of dating through man's wisdom. And I, I put down four things that taught me how to date the wrong way. And, 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 and this messed me up because I experienced a lot of heartache and heartbreak and a lot of sad love songs wrecking my brain is crazy. Had a lot of, a lot of sad love songs. So let's look, at, let's look at four things that taught me how to date the wrong way. The first is this, watching movies. <laughs> I mean, have you seen like the action movies nowadays? Like they always got to put in this unnecessary scene. Like, what was that? Like, like, there's a zombie apocalypse, and zombies are chasing the hero. The hero's running away from the zombies, find a girl on the side of the road, picks her up, says, run with me because the zombies are after us. They jump into a house and fall into, like, a candlelit room. <laughs> and while the zombies are surrounding them, oh, no, we're going to die. How about this? Let's sleep with one another. Little do we know you're being indoctrinated by movies. You're being programmed. You're being groomed by movies to think that that's dating. Like, the bugger never even know the girl. But it teaches you like, oh, the world is going to end. How about we just have sex? And it will make the zombies go away. <laughs> movies have taught me that if you wanted to land a good girl, to date a good girl, movies have taught me that you needed to be tall, handsome, and play quarterback for football. football. <laughs> if you could imagine the low self-esteem I was battling, laughter and the depression I was facing because I met none of those requirements. I'm not tall. I'm kind of handsome. <laughs> but, but, but I never played football. Never played football. So I felt like as a kid growing up that I will never get a good date because I didn't fit the criteria that the movies say you needed to be in order to get a date. And here, let me just say this because I think this is important. Going to the prom or not going to the prom does not define you. It amazes me how many of our youth are contemplating depression and suicidal thoughts because they've anchored their identity in finding a date to the prom. That's a lie, yet the Lord says, I value you so much. You are more than going to the prom. I gave my life for you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are my beloved. I cherish you. You could go all around the world, look for another person like you. You are unique. That means your value is so high and so precious. Don't anchor all your identity on finding a date to go to the prom. Look at this guy. I never made it to the prom because no girl wanted me. <laughs> But I think I turned out okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I learned, I learned dating the wrong way through watching movies. Here's the second thing. I learned dating the wrong way through cultural trends. And one of the things that culture will teach us is this. Date equals sex. That it's not dating if you're not having sex. And this is what happens. There's so much pressure over individuals because the crowd will say this. Hey, if you're not having sex, then you're not part of the in crowd. You're like one geek, nerd, civil engineer. You belong outside. <laughs> And that's what culture will teach us, but that's so far from the truth. There's a song that says, you don't have to take your clothes off to have a good time. Oh, no. That's a good song. So unfortunately, culture has taught us that dating equals sex. Got to have sex. That's so far from the truth. If you want more information about sex, Pastor Heather did a pretty awesome sermon last week. Go online, go on YouTube, go on Facebook, listen to it because it's some pretty awesome stuff. Here's the third thing that taught me how to date the wrong way. I love this. Astrology. <laughs> Woo -hoo, Astrology. Horoscope. Hello, somebody. It's a scope into horror. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm Taurus. You're Capricorn. Oh, we are compatible. We should hook up. <laughs> Why should we hook up? Because the star says so. I mean, think about it. Let's hook up because the stars say so. This is where Apostle Paul said that man had begun to worship the creation rather than the creator. So we've, we've like, we're, we're asking stars and, and trees and, and, and rocks and, and crystals to guide us on relationships. Like, God said it this way. In the book of Psalm, I'm just going to paraphrase it for you because I can't speak good English, so I'm going to bamify it. God said to his children Israel, said, 
Listen here, kids. You mean to tell me that you're going to go chop down one tree, you grab a tree and you carve an image from that tree, and you anoint this image, and you pray to this image, and you bow down to this image, and you worship this image, but then when you get cold, you grab the bugger and you put it in fire to warm you up. <laughs> and he's like, what, what, why? Right? So it's, so it's not like, oh, I'm Taurus, you're Capricorn, we're compatible, we should hook up. No, it's not that. It should be more like this. I'm broken. You're broken. I'm bus up. You're bus up. So before we could do this, let's first do this. Because if we do this and I'm bus up and you're bus up, then we're going to be like bus, bus, up, up, bus, up twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so let's make it right here first before we make it right here first. Amen. Amen. So, praise the Lord. So, so, so that's the third thing that taught me how, how, how to date the wrong way. The fourth thing that taught me how to date the wrong way is what I call bad uncle advice. How many of you got some aunties and uncles, they get a couple of cold ones in them, and then they think they're wise enough to give you wisdom on how you want to live your life? That's <laughs> what I call the bad uncle advice. I get to say your story. So I had a bad, I, he was a good uncle, but he gave me the worst advice. First off, his relationship was... <laughs> And so, but every time he comes over to the house, you'll sit under the mango tree and you'll have his cooler with some green bottles. So you know it's either Steinlager, Heineken, or Vailima. And so, but he always smoke a cigar. And every time he is drinking, I try to ignore him or like run away from him because he always thinks that he can give me wise advice on relationship. So one day I was walking out the house and he's sitting there. He goes, hey boy, I, I saw him at the corner. I'm trying to hide. He goes, hey boy, 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 I see you. Come, come, come. I said, oh, you know when your body language is like, uncle. So I go to uncle, and so he looks at me, smoking a cigar, he goes, hey, you get one girlfriend? I said, no, uncle. And he was, he looked disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with you? He said, see, that's what's wrong with this generation. They have no girlfriend. Let me, let me teach you a lesson about dating, right? He says, he says, okay, bam, I want you to look around. How many, how many kinds of bananas you see? Because in Samoa, we have many different types of bananas. He said, how many kinds of bananas you see? And we had a banana plantation. He said, uncle, there's many kinds. He goes, name them. So I said, okay. I'm going to say it in Samoan because I don't know the English words for certain bananas. I said, okay. There's a fai paka. There's a fai Samoa. There's a fai palangi. There's a misiluki. There's a swa'a. And so I would name all the bananas. He goes, okay, okay. Now, let me ask you. Let me ask you, boy. Did you try all of them? <laughs> and I was like... Yeah, 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 uncle, I tried all of them. All right, he goes, okay, now, now, which one do you like? <laughs> and I'm like, well, uncle, you know, my favorite, Fai Samoa. He goes, okay, that's how you should date. I want you to try all the girls on the island. <laughs> Every single one of them, brown, yellow, black, and white. I want you to try all the girls on the island. And after you try, then pick the one you like. <laughs> Now, this is my uncle, really bad advice, because he even went on to say this. And if you try to all the girls, you don't find anyone you like, then try all the guys. Try all the guys on the island, and then pick the one you like. I said, uncle, that's bad advice. <laughs> bad advice, uncle. And then he would, he would say to me, he goes, son, he said, don't do what I do. Just do what I say. <laughs> How many of you guys had aunties and uncles that gave you some pretty bad advice about dating? The truth is, Satan is the prince of the powers of the air, and he's communicating to you even right now how he wants you to date, and it's the wrong way. Whether through Netflix, whether through social media, whether through movies, whether through astrology, whether through scope in the horror, whether through all those items, there is a way that seems right to a man but it leads to death. Here's another thing that I've learned. Not only will people give you bad advice, but there are also places that promote bad dating. Now, there are many places that promote bad dating, but because I know the guys want to go golfing, I just, I, just have, I just have two places. But before that, let's read the Word of God in the book of 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. And on a count of three, let's read this aloud. One, Lua, Kolu, say it. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. 
But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Again, Pastor Heather spent a good amount of time on this scripture last week. Today, I just want to focus on the first three words. What does it say? Flee sexual immorality. What does it say? Flee sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is any form of behavior or expression that is outside the context of marriage according to what God says between a male and female. So what does it say? Flee sexual immorality. Flee sexual immorality. What does that mean? Don't date it. Don't talk to it. Don't call it. Don't sit down and have dessert with it. Don't have coffee with it. Just run away. Shut the computer. Shut the internet down. Just run away. Flee sexual immorality. Don't try to analyze it. Don't try to study it. Don't try to pray with it. Don't try to have coffee with it. Flee sexual immorality. The moment sexual immorality comes up, say, bye, Felicia. I'm fleeing sexual immorality. Don't mess with it. Is what the word of God says. Just get out. Now, there are two places that promote bad dating. And the encouragement or the advice is this. Flee from that place. The first place is this. Nightclubs. Woo! How do I know? I've got a PhD, master's degree, GED diploma on nightclubbing. I am the top notch dog of nightclubbing. Every day was, I got a statue, I got statues of myself in nightclub. I would get awards for being the best nightclubber in the world. I've got a PhD, master's degree, GED diploma in nightclubbing. So I know what I'm talking about. Flee nightclubbing. What do I mean? But think about nightclubbing. Let me just paint a picture of nightclubbing. You got pulsating music. <laughs> then you got pulsating lights. <laughs> Mixed with a little bit of alcohol and drugs. <laughs> think about it. 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 It's a good one, JB. If I didn't know any better, I think the nightclubs were trying to confuse you. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, that atmosphere is trying to confuse you, so you lose self-control. When you lose self-control, your guards go down, and when your guards go down, Satan attacks. If you think about it, just, just nightclubbing, like that is one of the only places in the world where a man can fondle a woman and a woman can fondle a man while dancing in front of people. Think about it. Like, could you imagine somebody doing that here? <sighs> like, what we would do is, first of all, the bugger gonna get two black eyes because it's like, you can't do that in here. And then we're going to take one picture and we're going to put it in the back and say, watch out for this creep. That's what we would do. That's what we would do. We take picture, post on the internet, watch out for this creep. Yet it's completely acceptable in the nightclubs. Yeah, flee. Flee. Not a good place. Not a good, not a good place. Okay. We good? Can we move on to the next one? Okay. The next one is this. Flee nightclubs. The second one is this. Uh, flee the internet. <laughs> now, 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 let me just say this because one of my best friends met his girlfriend online, and right now they have like one of the best marriages ever. So the Bible doesn't say like, don't date online. It is, there's nothing like that. The Bible is not clear about that. However, there is some wisdom that I want to share with you when it comes to online dating. Got two words for you. Manti Teo. Manti Teo was this awesome Samoan linebacker who was probably the first guy that got catfished. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Let's, let's, let's paint it this way. Have you ever gone to one restaurant? You sit down, you look at the menu, and, and how many of you order from picture? Yeah, that's me. I was like, order picture. I'm like, ooh, ooh, I want that. I want that because the picture looked nice. And so I say, server, yeah, can I get that? Server goes, ooh, that's one of my best dishes here. I get. Server goes back. And he brings the dish, and you're like, Seva, is this that? Because the picture looks really good, 
but what I got doesn't look like the picture. Same thing for online dating. Oh, Jason Momoa, Jason Momoa, click. <laughs> oh, Jason Momoa, he's so hot. He's got so much muscles, I wanna date him. Jason Momoa is available, click. You go to Umekas, you sit down. Brother man show up, doesn't look like Jason Momoa. He look like Jason no more. Get no more job, get no more money, get no more ride, get no more muscle, get no more talk, get no more handsome. He's not Jason Momoa, he's Jason no more. And you're sitting there trying to pull out your phone like, is this that? <laughs> now, I'm not saying, this is not gospel, I'm, I'm not saying that dating online is bad. It's worked for a few folks. But what they don't report is as on online dating has skyrocketed over the many years, as well as the crimes that have been committed from hooking up with total strangers. And so just use some wisdom, amen? Use, use some wisdom. And if he looks like Jason Mom no more, <laughs> flee the bugger. Just say bye, Jason no more, amen? So flee sexual immorality. Okay, so, so bam, we're going to close with this. So what are some good dating advice that you could give me? What are some good dating advice? Oh, jot this down. Number one, how about this? Don't rush it. Date Jesus first. Date Jesus first. Yeah, date Jesus first. Um, let me share with you why. Dating and marriages is less about finding the right person and more about being the right person. Yeah. To all the girls in here, don't date to try to fix the guy. It's going to give you a lot of heartache and a lot of heart pain and another sad love song wrecking my brain. Don't rush into it. Date Jesus first. The word of God says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then all else shall be added unto you. Don't settle for the Jason no mores in life. God has a Jason Momoa, even better for you. But don't rush it. Spend time with Jesus. Date him first. And he will show you what a man is. Amen? Okay, so date, don't rush. Date Jesus first. And second one is this. Uh, discover character before commitment. And so what I mean by that, family, is, you know, sometimes we can try to remove the sawdust in the brother's eye, but you get plank in your own eye. So, so it's important not just to discover character on this person that you're trying to date, but also in yourself. Because there is Adam's character that we all battle and struggle with. So, so as I go through these questions, I'm going to give you like four questions that you could ask before you apply it on somebody else. How about apply it on yourself to reveal character to see if you're ready for a commitment. Now, here are the first questions. The first question is this. Is there an addiction? Like, is there an addiction? Is, it, is, is, is he or she addicted to drugs? Is he or she addicted to alcohol? Is he or she addicted to sexual immorality? If there is an addiction, then brothers and sisters, let me tell you, they are not ready for a relationship. Now, not only the person, but also in you. Is there an addiction? Is there a sexual immorality addiction in me? Is there an addiction in drugs? Is there an addiction in alcohol? If there is an addiction in me, then I don't want to ruin my sister or my brother's life. I need to get it right. I want Jesus to forge his character in me by removing the chains and the bondages of this addiction. So is there an addiction? The second is this. How's the language? How's the language? The word of God says that out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So does Tita just go, bleep, 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 every time you talk to her, like every other word is a bleep, 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 Chances are it's not her language, it's her brokenness within her heart. She hasn't been restored. It's not a language issue, it's a heart issue. And so if their language is broken, it's a reflection of a broken heart. Don't rush into a relationship. Allow Jesus to restore that heart before you jump into commitment. How's the language? The third is this, 
What does the relational community say? Like, what does Pastor Heather say about the dude? <laughs> what does Pastor Albert say about the girl? What does mom and dad say? What about your best friends? Because what I've learned about lovey-dovey feelings, it's like a drug. It clouds your judgment. Oh, he's so handsome. I want to date him. He's a quarterback. <laughs> he's a quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's so handsome. And lovey-dovey feelings can often cloud our judgment so that we can't see clearly. It's the same thing nightclubs do. They try to cloud your judgment. And so it's important to listen from your relational community. What does your friend say? What does your mom say? What does your dad say? What does your pastor say? So that they can help identify blind spots. And lastly is this, question number four. Is the gloss greater than the merchandise? <laughs> Let's go, Hope Chapel. Is the gloss greater than the merchandise? Are her lashes greater than Jesus' lashes on his back? <laughs> like he took on the lashes. You just wearing it. <laughs> my, my, my old pastor would always say this, and jokingly he would say this. He said, bam. Most likely, the higher the gloss, the cheaper the merchandise. <laughs> Amen? What do I mean by that? Don't get fooled by the rocks that he got. Don't be fooled by it. He drives a Toyota Tacoma and it's elevated. It looks really nice. <laughs> don't, be, don't be fooled by that. Don't be fooled by that. Find out his or her character before you jump into a commitment. Amen? I'm going to close with this scripture. Home run. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It's biblical. Here we go. On the count of three, let's read it. Casi lua colu. Say it. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. It's one thing I know about Satan. He does not want good for you. So he's going to want you to rush into stuff. He's not gonna, he's gonna want to cloud your judgment so that you don't find true character, but you just jump into a relationship. Don't do that. Use wisdom. Allow the person's character, both the other person as well as yours, to come out. And allow Jesus time to work his character in you and in the other person. Now, when you are like Jesus and the other person is like Jesus and you come together, whew, that's a good, solid strong and healthy relationship. Amen? Amen? So remember, flee sexual immorality. Watch out for the nightclub scene. Watch out for online dating. Use some wisdom. Oh, man, I went far. Watch out for movies that'll teach you how to date the wrong way, cultural trends. Watch out for the scope in the horror, astrology. And watch out for uncles that give you bad advice. Don't rush. Date Jesus first. He is everything you need and a bag of chips. And let him work his character in you before you jump into commitment. Amen? Do you guys receive that Hope Chapel Kona? If you don't mind, can we all rise? Can we all rise? The Lord is good. And everything that we go through is good. The good and the bad is good. The painful and the ugly is good. One of the joys in my life is watching how my wife, Helen, gives Bam advice about dating. And it's just got to be the coolest thing. I mean, that's, that's mama's boy. And, you know, so he's grown up thinking, like, you know what, I'm going to consecrate myself. And of course he struggles because all of his friends are out doing stuff, but he knows that his hope is in the Lord and he's, he's, he's allowing Jesus to work his character in him. And Helen gave this advice that I thought was so awesome. She said this, she said, no one wakes up wanting to sleep with the devil. No one wants that. But how do we get in bed with the devil is just the little bait. The little things that he leads you along the way. Like, oh. Like, like what, Helen? Like, oh, you want to go get some coffee? <laughs> just us two. What are you doing tonight? 
I saw you online preaching. You're so handsome. <laughs> and it's the little bait that will eventually get you trapped. Amen? Don't let Satan limit the destiny that God has for you when it comes to relationships. He has a plan. He has a purpose. I did dating the wrong way and relationships the wrong way, but I thank God that when I dated him first, my relationship got stronger. Is it perfect? No. But it sure is hard to beat when Jesus is at the center of it all. Amen. Join me in prayer. Father God, I just thank you just for your word and, and your joy, Lord. I pray that, that as we leave today, that we will take these practical advices in dating and in relationships. Lord, all of us here do not want to settle for a Jason no more. But I thank you, Lord, that he took this Jason no more. And he worked, and you worked your love in him. And so, Lord, help us be more like you in the relationships that we are in, in our future relationships, and also in our now relationships. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you for this word. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Would you close us in worship, guys? Thank you. Just join us in this last song. And... Hallelujah. Bless you and have a wonderful week. You are dismissed.